Good morning and welcome here. Start with a couple songs here first. Final one. 
this morning. <clears throat> I wandered so aimless, life filled with sin. I wouldn't let my dear Savior in. Then Jesus came like a stranger in the night. Praise the Lord, I saw the light. I saw the light. I saw the light. No more darkness. No more night Now I'm so happy No sorrow in sight Praise the Lord I saw the light Just like a blind man I wandered alone Worries and fears I claim for my own Then like the blind man God gave back his sight Praise the Lord, I saw the light, I saw the light, I saw the light. No more darkness, no more night. Now I'm so happy, no sorrow in sight. Praise the Lord, I saw the light. I was a fool to wander and stray. Straight is the gate and narrows the way. Now I have traded the wrong for the right. Praise the Lord, I saw the light. I saw the light, I saw the light. No more darkness, no more night. Now I'm so happy, no sorrow in sight. Praise the Lord, I saw the Good morning, I'm Clinton Friesen, the Executive Secretary for the CMC, and this is the May Mission Board Report. So I want to start with John and Lois Wheeler. Uh, John is our radio pastor, and uh, they were in South America recently with some other CMC people uh, doing different uh, music nights and John speaking at different places, and everything I've heard so far is positive, and I certainly think it was a blessing to the group as well too. And so they've been sharing at different places and uh, just about the impact of the ministry and the continued need to hear good, solid, biblical preaching in those places. And so that was uh, very encouraging. And I want to note on a personal level as well, having worked with John uh, on the radio board, that it's just been a blessing having John uh, on that board and hearing his wisdom and then hearing him on the radio, even though I don't speak low German, to be able to hear him on the radio, uh, to hear his passion and excitement. And that's the same John uh, that I know behind the scenes. And so that's a real blessing. Then I think about our Bible camps. Uh, they're getting underway May, especially into June. Um, the camps will really start to get ready for the summer camps. Then July and August, uh, those who work full time at the camps um, just go nonstop for a couple months. And so we have uh, Dwayne and Sylvia Gertzen and Rick and Anna Reimer. Dwayne and Sylvia are at Rosa River Bible Camp. Rick and Anna Reimer are at Winkler Bible Camp. Um, and, and pray for them uh, during the summer that campers uh, would be led to a life of following after Jesus and pray for all the other camps that you're around as well too. And I try and give a little bit of a plug every year. If you have the opportunity to help out in some way at Bible camp, I would recommend that you do that uh, and go with the attitude to be a blessing, to be an encouragement and to be willing to work hard as, as well too. Um, there's always lots of needs at the camp and I would encourage you to get involved. I also want to uh, uh, give a praise report for Mary Barch. She recently got a car. She's a missionary down in uh, Bolivia, and she's been uh, looking for an opportunity to get a car for some time, and that's happened now, and so that's a blessing to her and to her ministry, and so we're very thankful for that uh, taking place. And speaking of cars, part of the ministry of Brett and Candice Lowen in Winnipeg is that Brett has been working on getting his driver instructor training with uh, specifically in mind to help uh, newcomers uh, and those maybe less fortunate uh, have an opportunity to learn to drive in Canada. And so he's nearing the end of that process. He continues to move forward. 
And that's also been a, a blessing and a challenge for them as well too. And you can continue to pray for them about that. I haven't mentioned most of our CMC missionaries and certainly there's all kinds of other missionaries uh, in uh, different parts of the world and they have different struggles uh, in some ways than us but in other ways they have the same struggles. They're trying to figure out um, um, life, they have financial concerns, they have personal concerns, they have health concerns, all those different things come up for them too and they certainly could use our prayer uh, for those things. So if you get a chance uh, to encourage them face to face, to send an email, do that. But when you uh, spend time in, uh, with the Lord in prayer, I would encourage you also to think about our missionaries and to pray for them. And again, if you get the chance to let them know you've been praying for them, that's a great encouragement as well too. God bless. morning. Um, I'd just like to welcome everybody here for uh, Pentecost Sunday. And for scripture reading this morning, we will read uh, Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 4. And uh, for those that were at Sunday school this morning, it'll be, we already reviewed that all. So thank you, Anthony, for, for leading that. But uh, we'll read these verses here again this morning. So uh, it'll be Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 4. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place, and suddenly there came from heaven a noise, like a violent rushing wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. And there appeared to them tongues as of, as of fire, distributing themselves, and they rested on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit was giving them utterance. And then by ways of announcement here, uh, we'll go through the bulletins here, and then there's a few extras as well. So our uh, prayer meeting, uh, again, at, uh, on Wednesday at 7.30. Everyone is welcome. Uh, there's a meal train happening for James and Christine for the next several weeks. If you feel uh, led to bring them supper, please contact Angela. I'm guessing that's Rod's. Angela, is that right? Yeah, okay. All right, so there's the number in the bulletin as well, so you can contact her. And baptism classes will be starting in July, so if anybody is looking to get baptized, uh, please contact one of the board members as well. And then there's still some lost and found items on display in the, in the back in the dining hall, so uh, please uh, go through them, and if anything is yours, take it home, and if not, uh, we'll find a new home for it there after June the 4th. And then... Um, Got a few more here uh, for the Sunday school picnic. That's uh, the upcoming event. Uh, that's June 4th. Um, if you plan to attend, everyone is welcome. But please bring a dessert or a salad with you, or uh, I'm guessing you could even bring one of each if you wanted. So, and then for uh, next Sunday, we have uh, there will be a presentation on the Bolivia trip there. So from Joel and Marie and uh, probably John and Marlene and Jake and Lisa as well. So we look forward to, to hearing about that and seeing what all happened there. So done that. And then um, also uh, the parsonage and the church yards need to be sprayed. The lawns need to be sprayed. So I don't know if anybody has a small sprayer and would uh, like to come do that. Uh, that would be great if somebody had the time and the tools to do that. That would be good. And then also there's... Uh, the new opening schedules, uh, check the mailboxes in the back for that as that's the list is uh, about to be coming around there. So um, probably ask that Pastor Harv maybe not grab one because uh, then you'll know when I might be calling you again or not be calling you again. So, and, uh, so all right. And was there any more announcements from the floor? Oh, uh, contact Henry Brown.
for now. So, yeah, you betcha. Sorry. Cool. All right, then we'll uh, ask the ushers to come forward and we'll open with a word of prayer here this morning. So, dear Heavenly Father, Lord, uh, we come to you this morning and uh, on this Pentecost Sunday, we just uh, thank you, Lord, for the Holy Spirit that you have sent us uh, that dwells in in every one of us as believers. Lord, uh, we thank you for that. And uh, Lord, we also thank you for the rain that you have blessed us with earlier this week. And uh, as that has helped to control the, the fires somewhat, uh, it's a bit smoky here again this morning. So Lord, uh, we know that things can still be burning even after only a dear two of sunshine. So we just pray for those fighting the fires. Uh, Lord, may you, may you be with them. And uh, Lord, we continue to pray for James and Christine and their family uh, with their terrible loss. Here this week, Lord, uh, we know it must be a, just a very difficult time for them. Lord, uh, we pray that they would look to you, Lord, and cling to you, Lord, during this, with, the, with this difficulties. It's, uh, we know, Lord, that that you have a perfect plan for everything and everyone, and sometimes it is difficult for us to see here. But uh, we lay faith in, in that, Lord, in your perfect plan. So uh, we pray for them. And Lord, we also pray for Pastor Harvest. He comes up to share here this morning. Uh, Lord, may you just open our hearts and our minds with, with what he has to, to share with us and, and that we would gain from that, Lord. So we pray for that as well. And uh, we pray for this morning's offering also, Lord. And we just pray for those giving and those who are receiving, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. very thankful and grateful that 
Pastor Harv agreed to come share with us again this morning, so I'll invite you up. Well, good morning. That, uh, that was wonderful. The little guy played the piano. That would probably be good if you would ask your Grandpa Braun maybe to sing a solo with you. And <laughs> we'll, next time we come, we'll look forward to that. They've invited us over for lunch, so I shouldn't, probably shouldn't be picking on him till, <laughs> till after. <laughs> we sing these, these wonderful songs, uh, and uh, I've over the years been challenged because I I like uh, uh, often I I really like the melody. A lot of those have been written a long, long time ago. And, uh, but I've looked into how some of them were born. And uh, the, the song that we just sang, I've Decided to Follow Jesus, has a very interesting story. The author of that song, that uh, it was an East Indian man who uh, was, I, I believe it was in a tribe somewhere sharing his faith and he was put uh, into a very, very difficult position where they tried to get him to denounce his faith. And so they put tremendous pressure on him to do with uh, his family and such and initially, I think it, this was just a writing, but then uh, I think I read here that the folk uh, melody, there, there's an organization that put it to music. But his, uh, his answer to those that were torturing him was, I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. I have decided to follow Jesus. Though no one join me, still I will follow. What a tremendous testimony. Uh, he sees himself, he says, the world behind me. But then he sees the cross before him. And which spurs him on to stand and to stand firm and what he had accepted and what he had experienced in uh, his faith. And so sometimes we feel that things are hard or uh, some tough things come up. But when we look at some of these songwriters and what they went through, and what became of that here many, many years later, we still are blessed by a decision that he had made. And it was put to music. And so it's, it's a, a tremendous blessing that we can uh, sing them and, and uh, be encouraged because of something that happened so long ago. Well, today, uh, if you have been... Uh, uh, getting a bit of an echo here. Uh, if you've already been uh, discussing the Pentecost experience in Sunday school, you'll uh, have to just bear with me because I have uh, uh, prepared to continue, let's say it's a continuation then from what you've already been discussing this morning. 
But I would read, uh, uh, Marvin read out of second uh, chapter of Acts. I'll, I'll read a few verses here in, uh, in chapter 10. And of course the setting is uh, the earlier writing that uh, Marvin was reading has the setting is that of the the Jews and those that were meeting in that that room, but then uh, in chapter ten it it carries on and Peter of course uh, takes over there with uh, sharing and and uh, and he uh, uh, stands before a crowd of Gentiles and that would be me and you uh, type of people. And so he says in, in verse 44 of chapter 10, he says, while Peter was still saying these things, the Holy Spirit fell on all who heard the word. And the believers from among the cir circumcised who had come with Peter were amazed because the gift of the Holy Spirit was poured out even on the Gentiles. For they were hearing them speaking in tongues and Stolen God, then Peter declared, Can anyone withhold water for baptizing these people who have received the Holy Spirit just as we have? And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, and then they asked him to remain for some days. So there are several events in in uh, in Jesus's coming that uh, there had to there had to be something brought forth so that it was made clear that Jesus came for everyone because the Jewish community they were more concentrated on their their people and and so on but when the the three wise men uh, came out to see the Christ child that was one of the events that it showed that it was for all humanity all mankind and here again Peter makes that very clear that the Christ child came and the Savior came for each and every one who would accept him, whether Jew or Gentile. Our forefathers <clears throat> thought uh, that this occasion, the Pentecost event, was important enough. There was three, three holidays or three uh, uh, occasions. One was uh, the birth of Christ, Christmas, and they thought it was, they would have three days set aside for us to remember that occasion. And then again at Easter, and then at Pentecost. So they thought that it, these were such important events that there would be three days set aside to, uh, to remember that, those occasions. And so here we are at Pentecost and of course the, uh, the 40 days which took us to Ascension Day which is also on the Christian calendar and, uh, and an important day. And so we know when we look at our salvation that these were all the events that needed to take place for to complete God's method of helping us and to to uh, to give us salvation. And so here we are. And if we look, uh, once you start reading Scripture, one of the the things for myself when I uh, first accepted Christ, one of the things that God did for me right away, he gave me an appetite to read the Bible. And it, it was never there before. 
but he gave me an appetite and I started reading the scriptures. I didn't know for sure. Uh, I didn't know hardly anything, but I started in Genesis and started reading and I was uh, uh, found it fascinating. Uh, the scriptures and the way it was laid out. And one of the things that comes with that when you start reading the Bible is that God makes himself known to you. Uh, it's been said that sometimes we stand for things uh, simply because that's how we grew up or things like that. And then we find ourselves protecting a God that we don't even know. So we have to be very careful with that. Because, and, and that can be true with... Uh, I used to... Uh, 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 three holidays was the best thing for me because no school like and, and maybe no work or something like that but had nothing to do with the spiritual setting at all it was just something that that uh, I, I thought uh, gave us some space and freedom from work and school and, and such but that's where in the danger lies it's important for us to know why and, uh, and uh, so that is uh, one way, or I mean the only way, is by reading scripture and studying and even uh, uh, study history uh, and find out the real reason behind some of the things that we stand for. And so one of the things that scripture will bring out to us very clearly that uh, that the, th the the Trinity and that is to say that the the union of the Father the Son and the Holy Ghost and that this is one divine or holy nature and so though that's a, that's a, something that we may not give much thought to as, a, as an unbeliever. But once you start reading scripture, or if you accept Christ, these things are made known to us. And so we can see that uh, uh, there's, it's a bit of a mystery, but it is necessary. And we can see that as we, we carry on and take a closer look at it. Because uh, it's, uh, it's a great truth of the Christian religion that the Father is God and that the Son is God and that the Spirit is God. So those three are the foundation of our salvation. Each one has a function in its own and its own purpose in, uh, in our lives. And if we look closely, like I said, I started reading right at the beginning of, of the Bible, Genesis, uh, as a new believer. And you will very quickly find that the Spirit was there from the beginning. Uh, it says uh, in Genesis, actually, chap chapter 1, verse 2, it says, The earth was without form. And void. Now just imagine this in your mind. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the earth, and the spirit, the spirit of the Lord moved upon the face of the waters. And so the spirit was from the very beginning. It's made clear there that it was moving about upon the face of the waters. So God had a method to save mankind, and each of these persons of the Trinity was necessary to be part of it. So the Son came, and we've been through uh, uh, those uh, seasons here in the, in the last... Uh, uh, months and of course the Christmas time 
uh, we looked uh, or considered the birth of Christ. So the son, that's the son who came down from heaven to be crucified and he was buried. And of course we know that he descended into Hades, it says. And uh, that is to say that he went into a place that we don't know about or understand whatever he took care of death when he went there. And so that he uh, rose again in the third day and it says that he sits on the right hand of God where he makes intercession uh, for us as believers. And so the Spirit of God works in the conversion of mankind it says it's clearly clear in scripture it says unless a man be born again from above he cannot see the kingdom of God so it is God's method and how we needed the spirit to help us to draw us and so that we could open our heart and accept the spirit in Here in our text, we read that while Peter yet spoke these words, the Holy Spirit fell on all of them which heard the word. And uh, so the Holy Spirit was at work. And so it all began when, when, uh, when Jesus ascended, he told the crowd that was watching not to stargaze, but rather to uh, be about their work because it was just a matter of time they would receive a helper. And of course, that's the, the Pentecost uh, where the Spirit was bestowed upon the crowd. And uh, it says that it's not, the spirit is not something that we see with our senses, uh, with our eyes. We often refer to things that are tangible, uh, but what scripture says is that it's like the wind. And of course, uh, we can go out and we can feel the wind. I just had a wind situation here uh, a little while, uh, last week actually, or during the time when the rain came. I had built a, a chicken house and uh, put some baby chicks in there that might have not been quite ready to be out and about. But I had built it, it's like a horse shelter with the, all sides covered except for the front, the top half. All I had on there was wire. And that, because it's a, not a winter house, it's a, just for the summer. And it faces to the east. In my mind, I said, if the winds, the weather will come, it'll come from the west or from the southwest or from the north, but not from, from and if it's the east, it'll be warm. Well, I went there and I found these chicks almost frozen and the rain was pouring and, and it, the wind was blowing and it was blowing from the northeast. And I said, how dare it? I went home and I actually looked it up on my page uh, on, the, on the phone. And the arrow showed from, from the southeast, or, or from the northeast, the wind was blowing right into that chicken coop and made a few circles and made sure that those chicks <laughs> got good and cold. But the point I'm trying to make is 
Where did that wind come from? I couldn't see it, but I could feel it. And I could feel where it was coming from, which direction. But it's not like I was going to be able to get in my pickup and head that way to go shut the wind off. That's one thing that the Lord, when he created this earth, we hear all kinds of movement when it comes to weather and all this. They had all figured it out. But where does the wind start? That's one thing that is still in God's hands. And it, uh, this doesn't matter if you quit driving your car or whatever. That wind will still do exactly what the Lord wants it to do. <laughs> and, so it, so is, and, and so it is. And so the natural, something as natural as wind is what scripture uses to teach us about the spirit. Because it's something that we don't see, but we experience it. And so that's why it's such an important, important part of our salvation. It says, the wind blows where it wishes, and you hear the sound thereof, but you can't tell where it comes and where it goes. So, everyone who is born of the Spirit, and so, I, like I said, the scripture uses this great uh, secret of nature as a comparison as to the working of the Holy Spirit. With all that is uh, going on, when the Spirit takes hold, it does a great work in our hearts. Uh, we don't uh, we don't know how to explain it but we know that it works the spirit to be born again the new birth it gives birth to our mental powers within us when we accept Christ as our Savior, and even if in a very small way, the Spirit awakens something within us that wasn't there before as an unbeliever. It awakens our mind to things that we would have otherwise not give thought. It helps our mind to work right according to God. The Holy Spirit uh, doesn't give us the power to will. That we can already do without the Spirit. But we all have, uh, have to uh, uh, direct our will in certain ways as, as unbelievers. But the Holy Spirit takes that will that we already have and then it removes it from its bondage and frees us to think and to act according to the way the Lord would want us to. And so this is one of the, the work of the Spirit. Again, uh, the Holy Spirit doesn't uh, give us the power to think because we already know how to think before we become believers. But it gives us, first of all, the power to believe, and then it gives us the power to think according to the Spirit's leading. And so it helps to correct our thinking. And so the power of thought to think the right way is, is, is an amazing uh, help in, in the direction of how we do everyday life. Uh, it's been said, I've often shared, uh, when you, uh, at one time there, there used to be signs on these doors at these business places where uh, 
you'd think that you might park there because it's open space. But when you look up and you see the sign on the door says, don't even think about parking here. You see, that makes a difference. Then you back out and you decide to park somewhere else. Initially, your thinking is, I can get away with it. But when it says, don't even think about it, then <laughs> it somehow hits home. And, I, and I, I know that the Spirit helps us with our thinking. And so it helps us to, to think and do the right thing because it all starts with a thought. Uh, we have the capacity to reason, but the Holy Spirit helps us uh, to set our reasoning on the right track. And when we have that spirit alive within us, it helps us to discern right from wrong. Often we go on from day to day and we find out things come up and we need to know where we stand, how we can position ourselves in, in, uh, in something. And so the Spirit will help us in discerning what is right and what is wrong. And it's to the measure that we open ourselves up and allow this spirit to become strong within us that it helps us on, the, on our everyday life path to do what is right in God's eyes. <coughs> the Holy Spirit seeks to clean up our understanding so that we will understand that it is a poor thing to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season, for instance. And uh, scripture says, and let go of the eternal weight in glory. It is a mystery of how the spirit works, but we know that it works and helps us in all those areas. It can take a will of a, someone who is dead against things to do with Christianity. I remember my sister years ago, after I accepted Christ, I, uh, she's, she's from out of town and she said, came to visit us and she was very critical. She says, this, this whole thing of been going that direction in your life and now all of a sudden, just like that, you're going the other direction. And she found that to be uh, in a true sense, unbelievable. And it was a year or so later, we went to visit her, and she had accepted the Lord in the meantime, and she was involved in the church. So all she wanted to talk about was church things, this experiences. All, all, and I thought, it wasn't that long ago, you thought uh, that was unbelievable that and yet it same thing happened to her and we know that we hear that in testimony that there is those who have stood against anything Christian and when the spirit takes hold of that heart it is almost overnight the thinking starts to change even in a small way and yet with time as they open up and allow the spirit to become stronger in, within them, they start doing the things like from a Saul to Apostle Paul. A clear example in scripture, what the spirit does when it takes hold of a hardened heart and uh, puts it on the right track. It helps us in all those areas of our thinking and our uh, uh, believing and also uh, the power that it gives us. The Holy Spirit by its power will cause a will to be cleansed and purged and to start a new path. It puts the mind that had us fallen and causes it to become upright again. It's what they call the renewing of the mind. Years ago, I read a book entitled that, and it gave me a tremendous insight in how the Lord continues to want to help us to renew our mind 
because it's to the measure that we allow that that we can uh, do the things that are pleasing in God's eyes. The Holy Spirit gives us power which we never had before our conversion. We have a body uh, by the Holy Spirit that body is made into a temple of God. And one of the things that uh, we find very soon when we become Christians is that we want to do away with some of those things that are not good for us physically. And uh, uh, it's, it's something that comes to mind because of the spirit at work within us. Because we start to see ourselves in a different light, like our physical bodies. So in scripture it speaks of that we are a temple. And so we are to be careful what all we put into here with uh, our eyes and our mouth and, and so on. Uh, it says that the first man, Adam, was made a living soul, but the second Adam was made a quickening spirit. And so uh, when we accept Christ and, we, and the spirit enters us, we become a body. We are, we are already a body and soul before that. But then it, we add the spirit to it. So the third part is what compels us to do and to think. And so the spirit puts a, a life into our body and our soul that wasn't there before. And so it was very important that this Pentecost experience needed to happen. And, but because we are a people that like to see things uh, with our eyes, it says that it came down like fire. I always thought it was fire, but it was like fire. Like it gives you a picture, a visual of what happened so that the people could actually see and then we can read about it and it helps us in our understanding and there's so much in scripture for that reason it is written to help us in our understanding and and that is one of them and so the spirit gives us power to have communion with God it gives us the power to pray and to communicate with God the Spirit suggests to our thoughts what to pray. Uh, and uh, it causes us to make up our mind that we want to obey the things that are instruction that is given to us in Scripture and also at the Spirit's prompting. And without the Spirit's prompting, we would continue to go down a path that uh, it doesn't end well. It gives us the desire to open our heart and to do the things of God. So the Holy Spirit awakens a power within us which before our conversion was asleep and it was out of order. Uh, have to uh, wrap it up here. The, we know that uh, the things that are going on in our world, uh, I often find myself thinking that uh, somebody needs to take the bull by the horns and make some correction and but if you look closely at the things that you know that absolutely shock us that are going on but if we look closely it's a spiritual battle it comes from a place that because uh, sometimes we uh, we wonder when they refer to they they and it seems like there's no beginning there and that's because 
some of this is, is, is on the spiritual level and, and for us as a Christian community, our, uh, our work is to pray and ask the Spirit to help us to overcome. And I know that some of these things will unfold uh, and in order to fulfill pro prophecy, uh, God allows a man to go down a path uh, as a community or a nation because of uh, the unbelieving, uh, because of our unbelief. And so there's, there's consequences for that. But if we continue to allow the Spirit to help us and guide us, it will always put us in a good place. It may not be easy, like the songwriter that says, I have decided to follow Jesus. It wasn't easy, but it was the right thing. And so it is with us. Uh, Charles Spurgeon once wrote that uh, he had uh, uh, met up with two men who had just been converted and uh, they uh, had shared of, in their situation, they had come to a place where all it took for the Spirit to direct them to the lyrics of a song. And the song was, Jesus loves, Jesus lover of my soul was the one line that brought them to where they had, the Spirit had enlightened them and they had accepted that Jesus that loved their soul because they needed they had come to a place in life where they needed to be loved in a way that the world could never fulfill it. The Holy Spirit directed them to these words, and so it is today. The Spirit continues to lead and guide, and we hear it in testimony all the time that, uh, uh, that there was either a song or scripture or other believers that they met up with and it uh, brought them to a place where where they uh, the spirit gave them the insight that was needed in John chapter 12 in closing it says or not chapter 12 chapter 14 it says this if you love me you will keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father. Remember that the Spirit intercedes. It says, I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper to be with you forever. Even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it, is neither, it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him, for he dwells within you and will be in you. What a wonderful promise, and that is true for each one of us who have accepted Christ. It should spur us on to encourage others, and the Pentecost season is one time when we look closely at the work of the Spirit, and what a wonderful helper God has given us. And uh, we need to thank him for and praise him for that wonderful method of salvation that he had provided for each one of us. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this morning and for thank you for each one here this morning, this congregation. My prayer is that you would in a special way strengthen their spirit and that those who have never accepted the spirit into their hearts that they would do it at this time and Lord that you would continue to give them a light for the path that they're on in everyday life because we know that your spirit does that pray that the spirit would continue to 
renew minds and continue to give uh, uh, discernment for those who are in leadership and also leaders in their homes and so on. And so we know that your spirit is alive and well and that it helps us to do the things that are right in your eyes. And we know that scripture in your word that it makes it clear that it is lies within us to quench it. And it says not to do that because we need the guidance from your spirit in everyday life. And so help us, Lord, in that way. Thank you again for this morning. Thank you for your word and for the book of Acts that gives us insight into how it all began in the early church. And so we thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Danny, for leading us in those songs today. Uh, for closing scripture, I chose uh, John chapter 16, verses 32 and 33. And I uh, just thought I'd uh, share uh, a couple of weeks ago, I seen uh, Pastor Harv's place came up for sale there. And I don't know, we hadn't, uh, hadn't talked to you about that or anything, but if uh, all of a sudden you sell it and you guys are looking for a place to live, I believe we still have a vacant parsonage in the back there. I think it's rent free as well. It comes with a few strings attached, but uh, I'm sure we can make something happen. So, But uh, thank you very much for coming out though. Anyway, uh, 32 and 33. So, behold, an hour is coming and has already come for you to be scattered, each to his own home and to leave me alone. And yet I am not alone because the Father is with me. These things I have spoken to you, so that in me you may have peace. In the world you have tribulation, but take courage, I have overcome the world. So, Thank you everyone for coming out today, and you're dismissed.